Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to the LGL officially unofficial cast covering the 2020 Spring Split playoffs featuring V3 Esports and Detonation Focus Me. I am your host with the most, Alex, otherwise known as Lexi, by Mars one of the year, and I'm joined by the remarkable and extraordinary Hapgood brother duo of Initialize and Nymera. As I say, always, gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. The host with the most what? Yeah, that's Out a really interest. good question. Charisma, what charm, was, was ooh, that compliment you every single time? <laughs> but not the most hype. That belongs to me. We have waited mm. a month for this semi-final series. Who's the play-by-play -play caster here? You're, You're not gonna steal my job. Uh, you do, well, maybe just for now. <laughs> anyway, I am Nymera, I'm Alex, I am the younger brother of the Hapgood duo, and I am very excited to be here today. And I am Sam Initialize Hapgood, and I am also absolutely stoked to be here. It's gonna be a killer series. Uh, even if we all are pretty much in disagreement about who's going to win this whole thing. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's going to be crazy. This is going to be a series for the ages. These are two teams that have had a really impressive run so far. Obviously, Detonation Focus Me were the champions when it came to that first place spot during the regular split. Going 12-2 and two and having a very dominant performance. Specifically, those first four weeks just looked almost unstoppable. Uh, they were just ahead of everybody. They seemed to know they were just on the same page. They had all the strats. They had the whole meta down. It seemed like they were untouchable for so long in this split. Mm. But that being said, back end of the split, though, V3 matched their win streak. Both teams at some point went 9-0 and in a row. So this was including V3's playoff um, earlier rounds as well. True. They went 3-0 and over Axes in the first round. So both of these teams have had something really good going for them at some point during, this, uh, during the split. Uh, DFM, I think, has been good for them the entire split. I don't think this is a point where they've looked weak. But they did lose a best of five series. They did. That is very true. DFM falling victim to Sengoku, the second place team who looked surprisingly strong over these last few weeks, and yet also ended up on the opposite side in week seven of a perfect game, falling to Rascal Jester. Yeah. <laughs> what a series, what an event for Sengoku. They've been up and down, but they looked so good against DFM, specifically in their drafting portion in my eyes. Yeah, they really did. And it, it wasn't just the drafts. I mean, the last two games, well, DFM pulled out some slightly uh, dubious draft options where they did end up in salty very... Salty back. Yeah, salty run back that didn't work out. And then they ended up in difficult situations around objectives and dragons particularly. But it wasn't just that. It was the level ones as well were just much better from Zengoth Gaming, particularly in the game one and, gosh, I want to say game four. Uh, where Blank in particular just had a fantastic level one plan on the junglers and mm. really put Steel in a difficult position. Absolutely did. And we, we talked about it a lot on the podcast. We Go did. watch it, by the way. It's really good content. That's our first self-plug of the day. But basically, it feels like DFM don't have contingency plans in place, or at least they didn't the last time we've seen them. It's been four weeks now. If they haven't managed to sort something out and put some framework in place to work mm -hmm. around, what do they do when things start going wrong in the draft, in laning phase, and particularly for the jungle starts for Steel? At this point, after four weeks, you know, then it's going to be something really serious. So I hope they've sorted something like that out now. Yeah, I really do hope so as well. I mean, on the opposite end, V3 Esports came into this playoff on a very, very hot streak. And then, as you mentioned earlier, they continued their hot streak going 9-0. and oh, And then finally finding some competition, you could argue, in Crest Gaming Act whom they were victorious over. Currently 6-2 and two in playoffs. Mm -hmm. You have to say V3 are showing some real competitive pedigree for their series. For sure, right? And they show that they can adapt within a series to CGA. It was a reverse sweep. They went down 2-0 and ran back the three games. And mm. we found out that they loved themselves some cards because aces were high. Mid laner ace did really, really well for V3. I think he's now 5-0 and on Syndra throughout this split. Has a KDA of about... 56 or something something it's crazy absurd. Like that. expect it to be picked and banned yeah uh, and not just that it was the fact that they came back in effectively a reverse sweep right they they mm. uh, cga in their the quarterfinals had put v3 in an exceptionally difficult position seemed to have figured v3 out and then boogie goes uh i'm actually pretty good at these here early game champions like the lee sin and the rex i all that kind of jazz 
uh, and runs over the game suddenly. And a lot of that as well was, was the Sintra pick for Ace. It was the Rumble pick for Ace. Yep. Uh, and we had had questions coming into playoffs about Ace's effective champion pool. What was he actually looking uh, competitive on rather than just being part of the game? And he found a couple of picks that were really, really strong. Syndra and Rumble, uh, foremost in my mind when it comes to that particular champion pool. Yeah, this is going to be a very exciting series. If you're interested for our heavily condensed thoughts in regards to this, by all means, do check out our podcast episode. Speed run the podcast. Go, go, go. The podcast. <laughs> we we cover this, uh, our predictions regarding uh, round three. The, so the semifinals of Detonation Focus Me facing off versus V3. And we also cover all of the possible outcomes that could happen for Sengoku versus DFM or V3 and all of the victorious that come through this. I think it's really important to first talk about where we're expecting this game to go. Um, where our predictions lie, key moments and champions, and also key players in the matchup. I want to begin this by talking about arguably our MVP of the whole spring split so far and that is boogie the king of the jungle of the lgl yeah. at the moment so it takes two to tango only takes one to boogie Oof. jungle for v3 I, i've been preparing that for so oh, long I <laughs> thought about so it going to sleep good. last night and i was oh it was it's, it's been a godsend but yeah boogie has been absolutely absurd this split so he's the ex flash wolves jungler from last year you would have seen an M uh, msi group stage if you tuned in last year to that as well um, as a team, V3 are 4 and 0 when they have Rek'Sai. That's pretty huge. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of other champions which we'll mention as well. Syndra, of course, mentioned mm -hmm. that before, 5 and 0. But Boogie has really been facilitating this team, particularly in the early game, and his team fighting is just absurd. Yeah, it really, really is. This man is a monster uh, on pretty much everything he picks up, and mm -hmm. I think. Where in the early split, V3 were hyper reliant on Boogie. If Boogie didn't do well, V3 didn't do well. Now there seems to be a team around him that are looking to carry, looking Good to shop. play around really him. Uh, bot lane has stepped up in particular. Archer and Rainer for me have been pretty stellar over the, the closing weeks of the splits into playoffs. Yeah, they, it's been really impressive. I think I think I'm really excited to see. We are not 100 percent sure of the patch we are going to be I think playing. Point eight. I believe it's ten point eight. Going to be 10.8. Thank you, Nymera, for that. I was not aware of that. Could be completely blindsided and it's like 10.9 in Shams. No, it, no, it won't be. Uh, it won't be 10.9, thankfully. That, that, is, <laughs> that was meant to be the MSI patch. But that does raise a lot of interesting picks that I think champions and players can bring out. I mean, one that we've been seeing a lot of in a lot of other regions is Graves, a champion that hasn't yeah. really made their debut in the LJL, but a champion that's been dominating basically worldwide partly because we haven't had games for about a month, which is probably the reason why we haven't seen him, right? Uh, absolutely. And it's fair to say that both Steel and Boogie have been putting a lot of time into that champion in their solo queue in the meantime. So I would be unsurprised to see that pick come out. It also works really well with a couple of the burst champions, namely Corky and Varus with the Graves on top of it. Jace, it's, too. Jace, all of these picks where you can basically say, I don't care if perhaps my damage is supposed to fall off of some <laughs> building lethality on the Varus. If I do half the health bar and the rest of my team does the other half, we're sorted. Uh, and we saw it particularly check out the LCK finals game one there, SKT versus JNG, rather T1 versus JNG. Uh, that combo is pretty nuts. It's horrible. It really, really is. Um, I think it's also worth noting a lot of AD carry nerfs and changes mm -hmm. have come through. Mm -hmm. Phalios has been hit on all of his, uh, you know, his Q abilities. You know, because he doesn't rank them up as he goes through the game. He gives himself stats. Basically, his Q now has like a scaling total AD factor into it and a scaling base damage. He used to use the flat amount. Um, Ash has been buffed a lot. Mm -hmm. Callista's been nerfed on her slow, on her Ren for the early ranks as well, which means maybe top lane Callista won't be so viable. Um, Senna gets less souls. Trist has been heavily buffed on her E. Varus had some ult nerfs. Uh, Zaya had some further buffs. There are a lot of things. I'm probably missing some as well, but the AD carry meta should be all out the mat, all out the window. <laughs> One other buff I want to call out. Go on. We can. There's been some Evelyn buffs, and you know who plays Evelyn really well. It might Not take you. only one to Boogie, but if you've got Evelyn in a Tango skin, you've got the two to Tango. Oh, God, you are... Oh. Boogie's such a good Evelyn. I don't necessarily expect it that much, but he has been putting some if anyone's time gonna in. Play, if anyone's going to play it, it's him. So, some time into outside chance. So there is an outside chance, and I'm really hoping for it, so keep your eyes out. 
I think that raises us to a really interesting place. Because we're playing on a new patch, um, there are going to be certain champions that are going to be prioritized in the pick and ban phase. And I'm interested to get both your thoughts in priority champions. Um, us are potentially DFM going to fall into their old ways as well? Um, um, I mean, there's a lot of questions around this. I think that Northless and Thresh are really huge for V3. They, they are 5-0 and o on both of those picks. I think that Reyna <laughs> has been... Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think that Reyna as a support has been the contender to the throne that Gang has held for a long time now in the LGL. Yeah, Gang yeah. has been really strong for DFM. Well, you but just Reyna have to look really at the strong. summer 2019 exactly. finals, right? Exactly. And and this is a matchup which we saw in last split finals, right? Oh. It was a DFM v3, v3 matchup. This is the semifinals, of course. It's not quite the same um, sites and a lot of this kind of stuff. So, uh, but yeah, I think that this should be, this promises to be a really weird pick and ban face because it of some of the be. players in it. I mean, are we going to see Heimerdinger's bans for Serral still? Mm -hmm. It wasn't banned towards the end of the series no. but by Sengoku. It could go anywhere. Yeah. It really uh, could. Initially? Yeah, I think I'm just thinking that the other pick that I think is going to be hugely prioritized will be in one way or another Syndra. Expect to see yeah. that first picked full yeah. ban. Uh, DFM play at mid and Bart. Ace is fantastic on that champion too. That's just huge priority. And Syndra at the moment is a premier mid laner. Mm. Uh, and if both teams are looking to secure that, I would be very unsurprised sure. to see that what? pick go uh, well, end up in the ban phase. Yes, yeah, Saros so is 4 and 2 on the Syndra, I believe. Both Probably of those losses, so. I believe, came in game. Four and five against Sengoku, mm. I believe. It would have been mm. um, the run back game where they lost game four. They did exactly the same draft in game five. Game played out arguably even worse than in game five when it really Yeah, V3. Uh, no, yeah. Sengoku would definitely hit their stride there in game five. Exactly. And I think it is worth calling out, you know, like we, we have had some questions about DFM's drafting strategies. Um, I think that Seros has a particular champion pool. I think that it can be isolated. I think he likes to secure himself some early power picks. But if you're picking mid very early with stuff like a Syndra and stuff, if you're forced to do that, it removes some flexibility in the draft. Seros is a good mm. player. I've had some questions about him, but his effect on the draft, whereas at the start of the split, it was absolutely hammer blow, just like, well, you have to ban like three champions against him. True. Now I'm worried about that. I uh, mean, on... I'm, I'm kind of the opinion. I think I've got a small list next to me of like some of the really priority champions. I'd like Ooh, to ask you guys your thoughts on this. So I've got sure. Senna is a very important champion. Both Utapon and Gang have been seen to flex that champion. I think DFM also have a very now. high win percentage on that champion as well. So wouldn't yeah. be surprised. She was heavily nerfed. So I'll be interested mm. to see how that impacts. But Gang has Ten been seen to still play yeah. her in solo queue. So that's... There's Ooh, something about that because so so she gets less so she got nerfed on 10.6 and 10.8 I believe so her soul generation in particular and how much value she gets from the souls um I believe were were hit there mm. so basically when you poke a champion out your less your, your cooldown for getting soul from a champion when you hit them multiple times is has been increased I mean it's still a really important team fighting pick if they are confident on it and you know the practice hasn't gone in uh, from V3 maybe they can make something work with that but I don't know. It would be an interesting one. I think because Archer's really good on it too. Archer is very True. good on it too. Uh, I, I think there is a bit of a question on that. I think it probably has to be more about combos necessarily mm. over just Senna being very strong. Like, they use Jarvan where really you can right? pick Senna with a lot of different. Well, with gentlemen, no. with that all said, we have actually gone into pick and ban phase. Yeah. So I will transition you guys over. Good luck, both of these teams, for the first round. Thank you so much, Lexi, and he is completely right. We are in to pick and bans, and on the blue side, this day for game one of the semi-finals here in the LJL, it'll be V3 with Paz in the top lane, Boogie in the jungle, it's Ace in the mid lane, and that stellar bot lane of Archer and Reyna. And the man behind the team, of course, Coach Son. On the red side for game one, it's Dead Nation. Focus me, the legends, the titans of the LGL. But here, sat in the semifinals, in the top lane, it's Evie. Jungle, it's Steel. Mid lane, Saros. And in the bot lane, it's Utapon Gang. It really is. And of course, their coach will be on air, who'll be up there. And He's somewhere in the background, pedigree. there'll be a man called Kaz. And of course, on air is Exazubu, X H L E H Rocks, X Rocks Tigers. He's got so much and pedigree as my. Caster and brother is saying an oh, ex champion pool ex champion pool Heimerdinger set Elise and Rexo it would be uh, and what a surprise to see both Ebi and Seros being focus banned in the phase Renekton taken oh, away I from Ebi uh, uh, Steel yeah. banned away and of course Heimerdinger from Seros of course 
anybody who's been following Ebby's play in general knows that he does um, disgusting things. Disgusting on things on Renekton's and set. set. Uh, and of course, Boogie does pretty disgusting things on both Elise and Rek'Sai, especially yep. when they are getting first pick of those champions. So forcing him onto something that perhaps DFM are happier to deal with makes a lot of sense. Also, Aces LeBlanc is a pretty terrifying threat. Unsurprised to see that go away. But look at this. First pick, Graves being been, hovered yeah. and then locks in. Yeah, so I think that the Renekton ban, I'm just going to go back to that very quickly. I think it's really important. We talked about it quite a lot coming up to this series. I feel like DFM need themselves reliability to start really try and um, play a lot of the team fights a lot better. They were defaulting back to Ebby's Nar. It wasn't working. The Rage Bar just wasn't really coming out um, in a lot of uh, the big team fights versus Sengoku. So something like Renekton was really big in terms of having strong laning phase into a strong team fight. What that means is like maybe we're going to be defaulting back to an Aatrox now for that more kind of team fight presence. DFM, however, have gone straight for the Varus. We won't have the Graves Varus combo. Yeah, and that was what I wanted to bring up. That Graves Varus combo has been broken apart, and DFM as well were struggling to deal with the Varus. Just take it for yourselves. Break up the combo. You know Varus is a great pick generally. You've still got other picks to pick up as well. It's not like you're having to hamstring yourself with this pick, so I'm really happy yeah. with it. Is that a lot of long range initiative? already and Seros and Evie both played the all and we haven't seen Evie play it in a while and uh I, I, Boogie wants it go on man throw I mean, that grave somewhere else there, 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 is, <laughs> there is there is the, oh so it's Marco actually locked in there um, we go so, but anyway there is the outside chance that Graves of course goes into the solar lens right um V3 oh yeah so Ace does play a lot of the Jace it's not been a pick which I've been particularly fond Neither of for V3 however when you pair it up with the Graves Suddenly the burst becomes a one shot. That's why we've been talking about pairing up the Graves with another burst champion or the Varus with another burst champion. It wouldn't surprise me if they picked up something. Okay, they get the, the, um, the Zoe. Yeah, the Zoe is the other pick alongside that. Another pick, actually, which I'm not too fond from Ace, but the combo is what we're having faith in here, not necessarily just the individual pick. And of course, you know, Saros, if he's likely to play this on, we saw this matchup between Pyrian. And Saros in game one of the Juggernaut match. We really did. And Saros got his ass handed to him a bit. He did a little bit. We'll see what happens here in the first the first place, though, is we're thinking about Steel going towards this trundle, another one of those premier junglers at the minute. Yep. Uh, Pillar and Orn is a fair amount of CC. And you get a Mark out to And you do. And of course, you've got to remember that Ebby has been putting work in on that champion in solo queue. He's got like a 73% win rate on Oof, it at the minute. Wow. Like he has been absolutely monstering people. So keep your eyes. Still a flex pick. And uh, we'll have to see because, of course, Varus could still go mid. We've seen that around yet. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And Senna taken off the table. Yeah, Lexi so was on it, apparently. Yeah, so apparently still a concern. So uh, important thing to me, Trundle is a really good ganking champion. Also really good into the Marco and the team fights and stuff. You know, if you get yourself to press the attack, you know, you auto Q auto for that auto attack reset. You get the exposure damage. If they already have their aftershock procs, you, you know, you have your ult on them. The aftershock falls off. They get like negative resist. It's awful for them. Uh, we're going around slightly into more of these... Um, the second round bans, we see that the Karma has been banned away from DFM. That is a pick which Saros sometimes goes towards as well. That's one of his, you know, his trifecta of really scary picks, which we normally say are, you know, his Syndra's High Midinger and the Karma. Yeah, of course, the High Midinger ban, it's not a mistake for those of you that, that don't follow the LJL. Saros is a legacy High Midinger player. He has pulled it out at all stages and it's just continued to be really strong. Yeah, he knows what he's doing on that. Callista as well, taken okay, off right. the table. Other things that might be able to compete with this virus being removed right now, of course, assuming that virus is going bot. We've seen it flex around enough. Uh, and Trundle, of course, into Maokai. Sounds like a great way to yeah. cut trees down in very <laughs> short order. I, I'm really surprised DFM didn't ban out Ezreal. Mm. Ezreal's actually very yeah. good into maybe they're just less Maybe they're just less afraid of that from Archer. Yeah, yeah but, but Varus in itself is really good into... It's one of the few picks which is actually okay in lane versus Varus. Mm, they're better in the poke department as well. If a Zoe sleep lands, you're going to have, you know, the uh, uh, the uh, True Shield Barrage coming through as well. It's another part of that combo where, you know, the multi-damage um, combo between Graves, Zoe, and then it would be um, the Ezreal as well. Zerath would, would be interesting. interesting. Yeah, that's it one way to put it. Another way to add in some poke. It could be uh, support, remember? Uh, could absolutely path in some time. I am ready for some Arcano, some Arcano pulses. Yeah. Uh, and of course, my brother is completely correct. 
poke bot lane between a Zerath and a Varus sounds uh, pretty obnoxious. But, but it's also pretty good into Zoe, right? Because if you portal jump, then you know exactly where she returns to, then the skill shots land on it, which means that if you ult within range of the E for Zerath, you're going to lose most of your HP from the uh, from the Zoe. Problem is, I mean, you're taking the cleanse, of course, but you are really squishy on this Zerath, and it's really easy to get on top of you. I think that the Graves can absolutely blow you up in a team fight if you miss your E. Uh, so actually, V3, going back to Trident Tree stuff, they're going back to the Fortune. They are, and uh, better be ready to set sail and run away from that bullet time, Saros, if that is your Zerath pick, because between a Zoe, a Misfortune, and a Graves, that's a lot of burst damage. They're still thinking about whether the Brawl is the way forward. Yeah. Uh, I've Yumi. gone towards gotcha. the Yumi. Yeah, it like makes a bit more sense. So Reyna has been on top of that. Also, Yumi on top of Graves is just a lot of work. It's, it's one of the different compositions. Um, so I, I saw a Maokai with a Yumi before, and like I think it ended up tanking about 4,000 damage in a team fight. It was, it was horrifying. It's absurd. <laughs> it really, really is. Yeah, and also one of the things is that one of the reasons I would have not liked the Braum is that while it is really good into the on, it doesn't stop Zarath Q, it doesn't stop Zarath ult, which means that if you're getting CC'd anyway, the Braum really doesn't help you. Whereas the Yumi gives you some more pseudo initiation, you know, you put that on top of someone who's dashing forward, you know, the last chapter can give you that kind of soft engage. As we've been talking about that, it is the Thresh locked in, which is putting the Zareth into mid lane, so it is going to be a versus the Zoe. And, uh, I mean, Thresh is really good at repositioning AD carry, so it is very good for a Varus. Uh, Not so bad for a Zareth either. It's pretty okay, which means that we are going to have, you know, combos of, um, you know, Chains of Corruption into the Death Sentence, perchance, uh, and stuff like that too. Which means that there's a lot of pick engage from DFM. So we have our full drafts now, and I have to ask myself, you know, who do I prefer going into this? We have some kind of like-for-like -like champions on both sides. We've got tank tops, we've got some ganking junglers, but then of course we've got some difference in terms of the scaling farms there. And there's a lot of poke on both sides. We could see some like orbital nukes coming in at any given time from these teams. Really kid. And of course Zerath only has to wander briefly out of lane to throw out an arcane barrage to assist either lane. Could well be interesting stuff. A lot of poke. <laughs> Define, define interesting. I, I, I'm just very interested to see specifically what we think about Zareth and Varus versus all the bursts on the side of V3. And of course, I want to know your kind of predictions having looked at the drafts just for this game and also for the series um, in general. What are you expecting to see as a final result here? I'm worried about Ace on Zoe. I've not been particularly impressed with it before. I think that Trundle Pillar is pretty good. If, if I'm honest. So I think that... Boogie has himself the chance to just farm himself up a storm if this game goes very slow. Um, for those of you who've been watching um, any of, you know, a lot of the people, a lot of um, League personalities' opinions on the jungle and stuff, um, about, you know, farming as compared to ganking and all this other stuff, people tend to universally say, though, oh yeah, but Graves is a different story. If he ends up getting farmed, it's oh, horrifying. My days. He is like a scaling Olaf. He can, tends to do the similar kind of things in the early game, tends to go with a phase rush, can chase down stuff like the, um, the Orn and the Trundle and stuff. He's also going to be the majority of the map, uh, of the physical damage on his team as well. I mean, Misfortune will have the ult down there, but on the top side of the map, of course, with um, the Maokai mm -hmm. and the Zoe, he's, you know, the sole AD threat amongst those two as well. He'll be doing some mad damage to that Orn in the early game. He, well, could be. And of course, Karthus, less popular. Find another bursting farming jungler who actually brawls a lot better. Look, behold, there's a Graves that's suddenly yeah, in there. So, so with a couple buffs that came in, actually 10.5, and people hadn't quite worked him out until recently again. And uh, he's come out, been dusted off, uh, <laughs> appears to have quit smoking, which is, is 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 something for him. And he's doing pretty well in life and uh, blowing people up on the rift. Maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't have patch notes. Maybe he has nicotine patch notes. <laughs> <laughs> so i think uh, right, we actually right. have a slight break before we go into great game on the stream so uh lexi what do you think about that draft i'm shocking right now he doesn't expect this uh, yeah you you <laughs> caught me a little bit off guard there but uh i was thankfully well aware and watching everything that was going on these i actually really like v3's draft I really like yeah, V3's okay. draft. It's a very me kind of draft, if you've been following our thing. and my So commentary. basically, don't pick Akali, don't pick Akali, don't pick Akali. Wow, right? That's great. Or, or it's Zareth wonderful. Sometimes, apparently. Because now sometimes, I've got some yeah. question marks regarding the Zareth. I think it could be a really interesting pick into the Zoe. I'm just surprised that it's there. Yeah. Yeah, so in isolation, I'm always a little bit worried about Zareth because, you know, it is an entirely skill shot based champion who is a mobile, which means that there's 
every chance that it goes wrong. Mm. But it's like, do you remember when we saw like um, Keanu Jones and the Carpets of Doom? You know, when yes. you had like huge, huge setup comps, and we saw you know like Ziggs with the Keanu as well, mm -hmm. or something with just a lot of setup. This kind of works the same way, right? Yes, we've, got ol, we've got an Ornol, we've got Trundle Pillar, we've got um, some other stuff coming in as well, like the UV the environment. Stuff. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So you control it, it means that Xerath is no longer like a skill shot champion as a point and click because mm. they're stunned. Yeah. They get hit. And the Xerath ultimate in particular as well, it means that if you land like the Varasol and the or the Thresher and stuff, there's a cleanse in the bot lane, of course. You land those things, Xerath gets like a free like five hundred damage onto them from across yeah. the map, which can easily turn a trade. It mm. really can. And it's also quite easy. It's easier to keep Xerath safe when you've got a Thresh Lantern available, when they can stand miles behind oh, sure, yeah. and miles behind a trundle and an Orn. Uh, and like it means that actually assuming things are front to back and Boogie can't find his way into the back line with say with say the Yumi or Maokai can find his way onto the champions. If they can't, the poke is going to rain hell upon yeah. V3. Uh, and Zoe in particular win game one off the drafts for me. Um, I think there's so much throwaway CC for them to have. It's mm. really they can just if they ever just set up front to back, like I don't see how V3 win. I agree. I think DFM have got this one. Assuming, of course, that V3 cannot find their way onto Zara. Unless they make their way onto the dance floor and are out boogied. That's it. If Boogie can do his thing, he'll do his thing. But, I mean, DFM are formidable opponents yeah. to try and do that against. We didn't really get into it uh, just before uh, the pick and ban phase started. But as we've got a slight moment of time, I want to rip the band-aid off. For all of our listeners and well, and watchers out there, who's winning this series? I like V3's ability to adapt in series. I think that DFM had good reading to game one, and I said that in the podcast, game one is going to be really important. Mm. I Because of this first game draft, actually, if you'd asked me before, I would have said V3, 3-2. I'm going to say DFM, 3-2 now. Ooh, okay. It's flipped up on the podcast. Yep. <laughs> Initialize. Uh I have not flip flopped. I think DFM take the series three one. Okay, and I'm gonna stick about you? Yeah. to my personal podcast prediction of still three one v three esports. I'm disappointed in you, Nymera. Disappointed. I just I, I said that game one would be important, and as much as V three have an interesting draft, I just like DFM look like they've got a better read on the meta than they did in their round two match versus Sangoku. True. It... Disappointed in you. But I, yeah, I know, go... I'm sorry. <laughs> we're about to go onto the roof, so gentlemen, I can't wait to say this. Good luck to both these teams, and <sighs> welcome to Summoner's Rift and the LGR 2020 Spring Split Playoffs first match of DFM facing off against V3 Esports. When do we get like an announcer pack for Mass Swan? Mass Swan amazing. Pack. Hello, hello, and welcome is what we should be saying because we are here on the Rift. It is first game of the semi-finals, and it is the Wrath of the Storm leveled up first by Zera. There, not the Q. Yeah, it's um, it's easier to set up with just in terms of hit. You always hit the comet because ah. uh, there's a slow on it. It's really easy to hit. So you just kind of walk up into lane. You tag him with the W. You get the comet as well. It's still got the same kind of amount of wave clear at the early levels. It doesn't have the same range, of course. But when you're contesting the wave at level one. Eye of Destruction has been. Uh, I think Eye of Destruction. Uh, I forget which way round it is. See, this is a champion oh, I don't. No. I know Arcano Pulse. I know Right of the Arcane. Right. I know finished? Shocking Pulse. Shocking, shocking orb. orb. Shocking Orb. And the W is Eye of Destruction. I was right. It, it is Zerath. I, I was. It was Eye, Eye of Destruction is the term. It um, is indeed. I was correct. And there you go. There's crap. <laughs> hugely in favor of DFM. These are the hometown favorites. They have been the champions for so long, and. Uh, one bad series hasn't dis. The Lesser Graves is looking to school those Twitter voters. Is <laughs> the AI reckons V three though? Yeah, so one thing for me is that Ebby is not on a solo carry champion, and that's something which DFM have used to get a lot of pressure in their previous games. I will say He's though, good, but it's not yeah. a Renekton Aatrox. Uh, we'll see. Oh, Archer is very lucky there. He was inches away from that death sentence. But um, I will say that Orn has been one of those champions that have been surprisingly dominant. We saw Kana in the finals versus Rascal uh, obliterate 
Doran on in that in top side. Yeah. In MCK. We've seen Licorice says he thinks Orn is actually very lane dominant, can beat out Aatrox in the right situation. Sure, but it's easy. not so like, it's, seen a lot for me, it's that. not the same as, you know, Set walking up a face breaker and, you know, just saying, oh, you're approaching me. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's like, there thing, is right? less tower threat from an Orn, gen. Oh, we speak. can see a pillar into mid lane here. There's going to be an early to... flash blown. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Coming in behind that domain is thrown down. The eye of the destruction has been thrown out. It does force the flash. The sleep yeah. was good, but it wasn't enough to stop that flash being burned ace down a summoner at only two and a half minutes into the game and what this means is that mid lane priority now gonna be really hard for v3 to play around because graves does want to keep on farming you know and he's gonna keep doing that with a plum he's gonna do he's not done a full clear actually he's done buff raptors um buff into grump so he's kind of missing out on his krugs and his wolves but it means he's allowed himself to be on both sides of the map in case anything were to happen um he might actually go for a raptor steal here as well which should be really big um, you know, just get himself ahead of that trundle and make sure at least he gets something for this early yeah, game. And Ace taking another bit of poke there, but Seros already very low on mana, and mm. with that Graves around and happily taking away those Raptors, uh, does potentially leave that open for ganking, but with Steel still in the bot side river, still not the um, easiest thing also, to pull off. Also, worth noting, it is the poke virus. Um, we normally assume it's going to be one of those things when you pair it up. Uh, sorry, we assume it's going to be a poke virus when you pair it up with another poke champion, just because the burst becomes He's just, back. yeah, this is the problem. You're trying to push up without a flash now, Ace. This could be pretty bad, but the Graves is around. Yeah, they are, but it means most junglers here thinking about coming into this lane. Steel there just shielding his mid lane as well, and Ace is going to back. Does run that teleport, has got the spell book. It would be a bit of an ugly first back, but sometimes that's the way it is. But Boogie's here and uh, going to prevent that gank coming out. Yeah. It's just here to Pressure clear out the wave. It is. It's just stopping the really bad lane state from um, V3. Actually, Seros has actually stopped them from walking up oh, there. Oh, there's sad. no Thresher, though. Could be a bit dangerous, but they right. can't get on top of Unipon, right. and uh, he's just being kept away from the wave for now. So far, some attempted stuff, but nothing major has come out, aside from a very slight goal lead of about 200 thus far from laning for DF. Well, yeah, there's a like a 10-15 CS lead to the it, Zara that Yeah, after that early oh, flash was blown. It's just really annoying up until you get level 6 now for Zoe, because you just don't have that ranged wave clear. Or at least back up really quickly there. here. Yeah, they're on ward, though. Yeah, so. They'll be fine. I mean, the Zoomies gives you a lot of it extra does. mobility. They have themselves to cleanse as well, and of course the strut from MF means that with the Zoomies and the strut, you just kind of, if you have both those abilities up, you're really not in too much threat. Yeah, but Steel definitely having a, a much better read on the early game this time around than he did in the Sengoku exactly, series. Yeah. Has been in the right place, has had a pretty good read on Boogie, has put Ace in uh, a difficult situation. And that's good news. It has, however, left Boogie to find his way to 33 CS at five odd minutes into the game. So that's good work for oh, him. He's going to be really happy farming up. And I mean, as much as this Zoe is not in the happiest place, I mean, if you do have this Zareth pushing up, he dies to probably like a smoke screen landing. Right? <laughs> a smoke, smoke screen lands, and then it's you have that into such a powerful ability. It's such a yeah, it just sets up so well, right? We see the two v two going pretty even as well, which means that you know, like, there's no massive advantages outside of that mid lane, which means that v three, although they're not happy about the mid lane, they're happy with the game stay outside of that. Yes. They are, and for now, at least, that game state is relatively even. We're going to see how things go. It is Cloud Drake as the first Drake on the Rift, and we'll see who decides, or if they decide to start contesting for that, and at what time that will be. And we're still a few minutes away from something like a Rift Herald, so for now, I yeah. think it'll be uh, laning as per usual. Yeah. And one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that Gang's on Thresh, and this is a guy which we have seen some absolutely miraculous performances out of. If you go back and watch Last Split's finals, which I absolutely should do, we have a vote of that somewhere when we cast that. Um, uh, he had some great performances on that champion. He pretty much solo carried his team, actually. He in game, was game so two, good. I believe it was. He was. He's just had some crazy games on this champion in the past. And so we're looking for similar kind of performances today, right? Um, you know, if you land a hook onto the the Zoe, if she doesn't have the spell, but cleanse uh, has the Lantern, of course, as well for the Zareth and the um, the Varus, meaning that you know you have these somewhat mobile, immobile champions. After that fact. Uh, yeah, he has a lot of agency in this game to make it work. And the agency in lane has led to DFM picking up the first Drake here. It was a good shove out from Saros. Uh, and with Ace not around to contest, it meant that was a pretty easy first pickup. But all the while, Boogie is finding his way into the opposing jungle, trying to find things out. That's a fantastic stun over the wall, and Boogie takes half yeah. his health bar. Uh, with Ebby oh, roaming down as well with level 6, Boogie's got to be careful. So uh, does Ace. Is, oh, He's landed sick. the sleep, and that was pretty big. Ebby's still here. Call of the Forge God is called out. Doesn't land the second 
call of it though and it just forces people away from the mid lane yeah utapon was actually roaming up as well seeing if he can get himself a kill participation with a long range arrow there but that is an alt burn from ebby trying to roam down and get himself an advantage here but you know paz is happily farming up in the top lane we haven't talked about top lane because it's a tank matchup and we know how tank matchups go they don't really do much Yep, uh, Ebby thought he might try and get something there. He'd forced the back early from the Maokai. Fine, tried to find something with the Rome, didn't come out of anything. And uh, much about, about nothing there, as Reyna takes a fair amount of poke from that arrow. Yeah, but then Yumi is a thing. Yumi is a thing. Yumi is a thing. Yeah, Yumi is a thing. That, that's the way we phrase this in the LJL, because we don't want to, uh, you know, get ourselves banned from Twitch, describing what Yumi actually is. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> She is, she is uh, TOS violating. That is what uh, that's what yep. Yumi is. Yep. <laughs> uh, but until such a time as we need to talk about it a bit more, we'll, we'll leave that alone. Steel's up in the top side now yeah. about and uh, potentially looking for a gank, but it will be a little bit challenging when he's on the ward. One thing which I'm going to be looking into is what is Boogie's build path going to be like? Of course, we're going to see the warrior out of him, and when Graves gets that item, it does become... Um, it's just a ridiculous power spike for every jungle that builds it, but for Graves, who really wants to run at you and just stat check you, it's even more important, right? They're actually going to head towards the Herald, see if they can break open some plates with that, but what this means is that because the bot lane from V3 is roamed up, they're going to lose themselves a wave, going to lose themselves probably two, three plates on this side as well, and so we're going to have to see exactly what um, the bot lane of V3 managed to do with this rotation which they had to secure that herald yeah they did and so they uh, went up to mid lane very there quickly. has been a conversation between a number of ad carries particularly the likes of sven over for c9 talking about what is worth to give up herald and if you are giving up multiple plates in two waves probably not worth the expected value of herald i think they only lose one wave there because, yeah, they uh, did. because mf mf plus zumi so you have the strut which is basically free moby boots and then um, supercharge having, it. Uh, yeah, and then you have the supercharge uh, with the uh, the the, uh, the Yumi as well. It means that actually they managed to get themselves back in time for that second wave. But of course, the plate had already gone over to the Varus. It had, and that means that for now it'll be Rift Herald secured. Seros with a blue buff and a thirty CS lead. Yeah. Uh, and for now, lane state remains even enough. But there is a fairly serious gold lead largely out of plates in the bot side and a huge amount of pressure in the mid lane. However, now you've got level six on the Zoe, your wave flare becomes slightly better. You know, Does... you can kind of have that, um, you know, that range in the mid lane now. Uh, it won't help everything. Of course, you don't have all the CDR in the world, but of course, the blue buff does help as well. And oh, Zeros is just really annoying. He is, <laughs> and he problem. lands the you... second part as well, because you know exactly where Zoe's yeah, going to turn yeah, up post portal, portal jump. If you, if you portal jump into, uh, well, within range of a Zerath, it does hit skill shots. You know, it's again, it's like anything to make Zerath a point of click champion makes him just very high value. It really, really does. And we've had this conversation before. We're saying, does Zoe have counters? The answer is yes, but nobody plays them because the only thing they tend to play into is Zoe. It's the yeah. likes of Frog and infamous Velkos and Lux apparently mm -hmm. into the Zoe. I'm oh, beginning to think that Zerath might be in a similar situation. Yeah, no, Zerath is definitely, is in his air counter too, right? Um, so I think that if a Zer were to pick today, we've shown now that Saros um, has the ability to pick that champion. Also worth noting, Syndra not picked and banned in this game. No, it wasn't. It That's so a much. good hook in the bot side. Forces out the cleanse and most of the help was gone, but the Ignite's down. Archer's in trouble. He's burning oh. down. Arcane Bar Barrage is coming down. Right is not quite enough. And he's going to survive. It's flashes burned from pretty much everybody there, though. Actually, pretty big play from Reyna to hop off, get the auto attack to get that shield, which then hop on to your champion again, gives the shield to your, like, the champion which you're riding. It meant that that was like a, a single digit HP trade almost, though. Crazy. Oh, man alive. That was very, very, very close. There's still an exhaust left for Reyna, but that's about it as far as summoners go in the bot side. And, uh, Heating up here in the semi-finals. Uh, as things going on, big trade on to Ace, but it's also fairly decent sleep to prevent too much more coming from Saros. And that'll leave that trade as is. But the CS lead continues to get more and more concerning in that mid lane right now. I think it's starting to stabilize across from Gotta that, hope. Maybe. All I right, let's keep an eye on it. Well, we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens with that. But yeah, so anyway, we see like double flash blown from DFM's bot lane. We do see that, of course, the cleanse and the flash are blown from the MF. But like burning the ignite from the thrash as well and not getting anything for it. It's not like you've got yourself a CS advantage out of it either. You've got yourself plates, right? Three plates. That's a lot that's of stuff. Pretty but big. That, that is pretty big in its own right. But it's not like game winning right now. This, I mean, Archer and Rain are still surviving here. Um, one thing which we talked about um, in regards to their CGA series is that Archer looked really out of sorts in the first couple of games in that series, right? He did. Um, and he didn't, he didn't look particularly comfortable. He ended up, you know, making a couple of misplays. And maybe there's something to be said about this game now being a online game. 
It's yep. not an in-person game. Maybe there's something about the, you know, the psychological factors of this game where maybe he's settling in a little bit better. And we are seeing, despite from perhaps Archer settling in a little better, a lot of contestion around this Drake. V3 have moved in, cleared up Vision, and set up their own, and they are now in position. Ooh, the Drake's Drake. pretty huge. Paz is this game here. Too. It'll be a fairly big one. Steals around Gang and Udipon here as well. They're trying to contest, but I don't think they're going to get here all that time. But TP is in. They're going to try and fight. Here we go. The grasping advance is coming through. They do secure the Drake to the side of V3, and they're going to try and get out. But Steel is, or, is flashed in, trying to get as much as they can do. That's a call of the Forge God down onto Archer, who's very, very low, but so is Steel, who's burning down. Oh, the arrow! For the arrow! Pierces everybody. Boogie now stunned in place, gets knocked up is in serious amounts of trouble and that's an arcane barrage to pick up another right of the arcane slays another and that means it's two for zero in that fight for the mountain drake it's and they're going to try and force the mid lane yeah they don't have boogie alive across the some wait was the herald actually forgotten i believe actually they didn't end up using it no, no they did it the map. so actually that herald ends up amounting to nothing it's going to be three plates maybe even four down in the middle it's just going to be three in the mid lane there as well at least the dragon goes over to b3 but we're starting to see what happens if D dfm manage to set up around an objective they really do, and that means about 3,000 gold lead, and yes, they lost the second Drake, but we see here how much damage they can do from yep. miles away. Yeah, so what we see here is that Steel gets his ultimate onto the Aftershock Maokai. It's really high value, and then the Call of the Forge God ends up locking up Archer long enough that... Of course, the W arrow from Varus is uh, just really, really painful. Really is. And that's also, you know, pinpoint play from Abby, getting the knock up onto Boogie there just on the edge of the wall. A uh, bit of an interesting hitbox there from that ability that yeah. ends up netting the kill onto boogie he's still doing pretty well in this game has himself the warrior enchant heels end up getting pretty tanky as the game goes on because you know having you know his his e and his true grip passive means that he will have a lot of extra armor to play with and then he'll probably end up building some you know some of the off tank items the later the game goes as well might see something like a hex drinker or a death dance but we'll have to keep some track on that and that is a massive amount of gold from dfm who picked up three plates in the bot side three plates in the mid a plate in the top 960 60 odd gold about a thousand of the gold lead they have already is from just plates and we're seeing 30 odd cs in the top lane we're looking at about 28 ish in the mid lane it's looking pretty good for dfm here in this sort of early to mid game for now it is for now indeed i uh, see the exhaust picked up from zoe from that spell book and uh at least managing to keep that cs lead at, to about a stable 30 deficit it's not increased since we last checked in on it but the problem is now now you're kind of holding on to the last dregs of life your torus we see actually a 2v2 yeah, yeah, right the, coming around here the pillar did come down but they saw archer coming through decided that was a bad idea as oh, ace takes a bit of a trade looking for that paddle star though shocking orb does come out to dissuade too much more in gangs, gangs around as well, as well. Uh, that is four versus three because, of course, Yumi is here attached to that misfortune. Yeah, second Herald spawn now. That's probably going to be the next big objective to fight over. As Ace is going to start looking for some Pope. Doesn't land anything right there, though. Bubble lands with no follow-up onto it. And he was in position, well. though, for yeah. Gold of Forge God. So what happened last time he called that out? Pretty huge. It is, but it would be a five versus three thus far because look where Utapon is. He's just pushing the bot lane. He's teleporting in, though, because, of course, he's a Varus and can bring that summoner spell without too much bother. And we're going to set up around here, and that Pope means nothing to ebby right now ace is gonna have to be very very careful about setting up for this it's throwing Ugh. massive amounts of poke down onto ace herald resets as well so what that means is that the poke battle is basically just meant that b3 are not going to be uh um, they lost position on midwave as well they have they lose done, that tower right? Yeah, they probably will do here. Three people coming in. None of that plate bulwark coming in to protect the tower as well, meaning that first tower goes to DFM in the series. And it is also in that mid lane. That coveted mid lane tier one is down. It means that Ace, who was already having a bit of a difficult time into the Zerath, is now even more at risk. Sure. And uh, we're looking at first items complete for DFM and not the same for V3. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that means this Herald with first tower is going to be secured by them. It will be indeed. Of course, it is going to be an Ocean Drift as well. Not something that we mentioned after that second dragon went down, which means that, you know, Ocean Soul is on the table. And it's a really important soul. That does tend to be, uh, you know, the game winning soul in a lot of ways, and particularly against, uh, you know, um, a poke comp as well. It means that if you do end up tagging an enemy champion with some damage, it means that you just get to heal up through that. And both these teams do want to be poking you out. Yeah, well, I suppose we are here in the LGL. You know, we will be in a Drakes and Furious 3. 
ocean drift and uh, we'll have to continue on with that i heard okay. that mispronunciation and had I... to continue on okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right we'll see where things are from now oblivion orb also picked up by zerath to the top of his okay, just to quick just to confirm that's a fast and furious it was right? yeah, okay, to right. to tokyo joking. drift but uh, gotcha. tokyo's ocean drift was probably it would have been a better way of phrasing it but nice. here we are we have to deal with the way things were said originally and um Things continue to look good for DFM. In this mid game, they've got themselves a second herald. They're setting up now for this Drake that will be spawning in so twenty light. seconds. Look at, that, look at that vision that they have as well. It's all it's mainly prioritized around um, the top lane because that's when they were picking up the herald and ran that fight as well. Spotted out the pink ward in that brush in the in the dragon pit, mm -hmm. but they have managed to you know get themselves vision, which sets up their poke advantage, which means that if Zareth lands, you know um, one Q, one E, one W, whatever, that could definitely be someone like out of commission for that fight now yeah it could and and what is going to follow as yeah well. it is and that's going to be another big swing in gold now up five thousand gold ebby here in the top side is level up on ace right now and i think possibly ace needs to be a touch careful versus all and we've seen how much damage he can do Ty's he's going to take a fair amount of damage but incoming zara thought they thought they might want to get a bit more out of that just force the summon a heal but of course uh more sparkles and the w the spell thief from zoe means that um well she runs away real fast Ocean Drake was secured by Steel while that was going on, though, and Orn's going to back away from this tower, knowing that V3 are uh, setting up a caravan to come top. They are indeed. Biggie managed to pick up the Krugs as well, which Ebby was just uh, trying to farm out there. Might be end up uh, getting a little bit of poke onto this top lane turret. There's a big rotation coming in from DFM. Though. No, they're they're summon... yeah. coming out. It is coming out. They're going to force a flash, flash out of Boogie, who cannot stick around for all that much longer anymore. And uh, yeah, DFM defend the top tower despite the rotation. Yeah, so Boogie looks like he's building towards uh, Black Cleaver right now, so he doesn't have himself a Hex Drinker, doesn't have himself something like a Death Stance. We're really waiting for the next couple of items to come in for V3 before they really want to start committing to a couple of these fights. They have themselves the Ludens on the Zoe themselves, they have an Essence Reaper on the Misfortune, which means that if they do get themselves into the fight very quickly before the Pope lands, they should be quite happy with the amount yes. of burst they can bring to bear. But doing that versus a very tanky Trundle, a very tanky Orn as well, it's going to be quite hard for Orn, uh, sorry, for V3 to make a lot of this damage stick in the early part of the team fight. Yeah, and we're watching Ebby here just being a little bit cautious again, but the rotation topside has there. Yeah, the second yeah. Herald is summoned, and that means this tower is not long for the world It's just either. methodical. It's methodical. It really yeah. is. Where was this DFM a couple weeks ago? They look so much better. They were They were on patch 10.5. That's were. where they were. And I think that DFM coming into this uh, spotted out some priority champions. The Varus obviously been powerful for a number of patches now. <laughs> just missing there. And DFM look really happy right now with this game state. They are here just saying, well, I mean, we've got ourselves neutral objectives. We have ourselves really good matchups into a lot of the champions which v3 have and that's a missed ultimate from varus but i don't even think that there's anything going to come of that because v3 can't force a fight right now no they can't and uh the pillar there was forcing a little bit of a dash away anyway and without the flash graves did manage to quick draw him's way to safety by the skin of his butt cheeks there uh, <laughs> what like he was real close to getting caught there in the end okay uh, not, not particular inflection i, I think i probably malafored that one but here we go <laughs> uh tier two is down it is, uh, and that means it's like a 4k, 5k gold lead, though. Easy okay. is. Yeah, it really is. And with four towers to none right now, it's a pretty significant lead. And Ebby finds his way into the bot lane of V3, but is on top of a blasting cone and feeling pretty secure. So he's just going to pop his way back towards lane yeah. as DFM continue to just keep the pressure up. Yeah, right and now. I have to say, so much of this is coming from this mid lane matchup because... Getting that flash blown from Zoe early, meaning the priority was no longer in the hands of V3, meant that, you know, like, this Graves couldn't find the inroads in the early game. Couldn't end up, you know, finding the ridiculous farm advantages. It's maybe a three camp advantage right now to the Graves, which is nice, and Graves does scale very well in a lot of ways, right? But Steel is on a very cost-efficient champion, a very economic champion, right, in the Trundle. He can gank, he can just put down the Trundle, uh, put down the Trundle Pillar, which is effective versus the Zoe, it's effective versus the Maokai in a lot of ways, and of course it's effective versus the MF2, regardless of the speed-ups which you have, and uh, he's gonna get caught by a bubble here, but it just doesn't matter because Thresh is there too, another very uh, economical champion. And speaking of economics, this Orn has hit level 13, he's right. got two upgraded items. That is a lot of gold just inherent from stats. But as I say that, Ebby's finding his way into a little bit of trouble, but he's found a lot of other friends, so he's just about yeah. fine. But hit another level, and that gold lead, which is already big for DFM, is going to be st yeah. statistically just way more because of the amount of free stats that Orn just gives you. 
Exactly right. I think that the way that V3 um, start turning this game around is, uh, I think they need themselves a Flash W onto someone important from the Maokai, but even then, that's going to be probably onto a cleanse target like the, um, like the Zareth, right? So what you need is you need some really hard initiation from the Maokai to lock someone in place, just nuke the first target out in someone like, if you kill the Varus and the Zareth, um, then, you know, the DFM's other tanky back, the frontline members, they don't kill you, right? Is there, no. It's not like Thresh is going to kill you with damage. Orn does have a nice amount of burst in his brittle combo and stuff, but if you manage to remove those two carries, regardless of the gold lead, V3 can win fights. Yes, and of course, if Trundle can get on top of you, he's got the phase rush for a bit of speed up. Like, if he can fight over, he does some damage, but he's not a carry. And that's, that is the big yeah. deciding factor. And if even one of DFM's carries go down, I think they could be in a more difficult position. But of course, thus far, V3 have found that quite difficult. We did yeah. say that in front-to-back team fights, yes, you've got a Nature's Grasp from a Maokai, yes, you've got a Yumi, but it is such a kind of logistical issue to find your way beyond all of these and, things, and their summoners, and a Thresh. And it's also it's, it's something to be noted that, you know, this isn't an Aatrox for Paz. Paz played, what, four or five champions so far this split? I think he picked up, uh, yeah, he picked up the Gangplank for the first time in the playoffs when he was against CGA. Oh no, he might have had one game before that. But he's had a notoriously small champion pool, but he's made that champion pool very effective. And the thing about him on something like an Aatrox means that he can normally have these game-turning fights at some point in the game. My cat, Maokai doesn't do that. He doesn't have, you know, the one-shot capability onto the back line. Archer's going to pick himself up the top lane outer turret, at least get them one of these outer turrets down, get them a long lane somewhere in a side lane. But of course, they've lost themselves two towers on that one lane themselves. They have, and it means that with the AD carry elsewhere, too. they will lose the third Drake of the game, and that will set DFM up for an Ocean Soul in about five minutes. Yeah. And that will force the issue. Uh, the, you know, we were going to check in on that mid lane CS. Yeah. Uh, so it's not 30 anymore. It's gone up to about 50 going on 60 here for Seros as he close up that wave as the waves will now equalize. And uh, Seros has just been absolutely superb on this Seros so far. Um, I had questions about him. I'll call myself out and say, well, I mean, Seros, I didn't like his champion pool at the start of playoffs. I think against Sengoku, it was a really big, big, big issue. This Seroth has looked absolutely superb. It looks effective, and it's effective versus the meta picks, which V3 are trying to bring to bear as well. It is, and we'd had the question about Ace, and he came up with answers in playoffs. Seros had to be questioned in the same way, and thus far, at least in game one, he's pulled out a champion that's gone... Yeah, I've got some answers for you. And with a Luden's Pulse now in inventory, he's oh, yeah, very set up to do a lot of damage. And I like the Morello pickup here as well versus the Yumi. So, and the Valkai as well. It's just going to keep them in a bit of trouble. Oh, as the Parasol. Chains of Corruptions land, the Pillar lands. Big it is a Yumi final Alpha. chapter, though. And that's pretty big. They're doing a lot of damage, gang. And you oh, have to flash Boogie out. Misses. But he does miss. And that's huge now. Boogie trying to run away. And Ebby's there in the front line, just causing as much trauma as he can. Sleep lands onto Ebby. But he's safe for now. Steel is there. The Arcana Pulse actually this is because the pillar knocks past to safety. And he's gone pretty deep here, He though. has, but he's so tanky. He's still got flash. I think he'd be a, a challenge to really contest. He knows what he's doing for now. Uh, that fight turned out to nothing, though there were a fair few summoners burned on uh, both sides there. There were, and this is the power of Yumi, right? Because you can just heal someone up through that initial barrage, which comes through. No Ezreal in this game, of course. But it just means that, you know, these fights... The longer the game, the longer the fight goes on, the more damage is coming out. Yeah, no mana now, Zumi. No, yeah, no mana there, and of course won't have any of those Zumis to go with it, which means that Arch needs to be very careful. Ooh. He's gonna die, I think. He's gonna see. He's got the speed up. He has had to flash and will survive for now. But oh, Boogie's going in. They're gonna try and find something. He's got stunned in place. It takes massive damage. But Ace is here. Oh, to get Bond does survive, but it's one for one because Zerath has picked up something. Zerath's now trying to run away. May have to flash out. Throws down that uh, Eye of the Storm again, or Wrath of the Storm. I apologize. Path now in a different position as well trying to go forward with the twisting advance and the fight is continued gang gets hooked another cleanse though from archer keeps double him up. alive and that's pretty big double up does a lot of damage ebby now in a difficult position actually he's gonna get rooted up i think this will be a win now for v3 Holy that's crap. a big one for them so what happens when you get on top of the team if you can't keep away against this team of v3 they do have themselves some damage as well yumi gives you massive pet chase there and of course paz is a monster on this mark i even when he's trundle ulted, it just didn't matter. Tanky boy is this Paz. He really is. And we were questioning whether Paz could find a clutch team fight. Just did. Yep. That was good <laughs> stuff from him, managing to find his way onto people. DFM, a little bit aggressive, uh, looking for poke there onto Archer. Did get punished in the back of that. 
yeah, good stuff from V3 to is, turn it around. And this is against the Ord items too. You know, we've got the two graded Ord items from Evie, and then of course the Luden's Pulse, like you were saying, on Suceros here, but it didn't matter. Boogie did get caught out at the start of it in that one for one. Of course, the follow-up damage from DFM is still very strong, but this is now two shutdowns down as well, right? They managed to kill off the Varus. They managed to kill off um, Ebby on the Ord as well. It's extra gold into the pocket, and when that gold starts getting more even, the fights get more even too, you have to expect. They do, and of course, we haven't really had this conversation yet, but uh, of course, the uh, subjugate from a trundle can reduce the stats from a pa from Paz, from that Maokai, but it's poke builds from uh, a Zerath and a, and a Varus. They're not the best tank killers. So if there's a lot of healing coming through on that Maokai, he could actually become more and more of an issue to deal with. Yeah, when you've got the Yumi on it as well, it means that you're, as much as you're a really bursty combo between the Zerath and the Varus, is it going to one-shot a Maokai with a Yumi? No, probably not. So then you get the Maokai passive, you get yourself the Yumi passive as well. Um, there is healing reduction on the Morel Nomicon from Saros, at least. We could see ourselves in another fight now, so I'm going to keep this point relatively yeah. short. Because, of course, Ocean Soul is on the cards for DFM. Uh, Sleep lands onto steel, but he's alive for now. Uh, Eye of the Storm did land briefly, but it wasn't. It was only uh, slow, but actually Paz out. now takes a lot of damage. Uh, Paz throws down the Nature's Grasp. Boogie makes himself unstoppable briefly, and that means alts have been burned, but not a lot else. Oh, and then Yumi just happens as well. So the poke means very little. Actually, DFM calling the bluff here, wanting to push in and get mid prior. See how this works out. They will, because it's about 40 odd seconds till Ocean Drake. V3 going to come in and cut off the wave. Uh, Frozen Trundle Domain comes down. Here. Trundle Pillar could be huge. Eye of the Storm isn't there. Call of the Forge God, though, in that massive corridor could be Bullet huge. Time is really Bullet big Team too. was big, though. Steel now in a difficult position. Paz taking a fair amount of damage, but heal burn from Ace means that. Uh, People are back to a lot of HP. But only one of these teams has a Yumi. They do. And that Yumi is becoming more and more problematic right now. We're looking at the back from Utapon, but he's got a teleport, so he'll be able to come back fairly swiftly. Teleports into this mid lane tower. They really want to contest for this Ocean Drake. Uh, and we'll see how it goes from here. Lot very dark into this river. V3 have done a great job of contesting this control, and I think DFM are just going to give it up. Yeah, they're going to rush themselves the Ocean Drake, take it away from DFM, no soul at this point early into the game, but it will cost them the mid lane in a turret, which DFM will take down very quickly here. And Vision might be dark around Dragon Pit, but around this mid lane, it is certainly not for DFM, and they're going to at least secure that for themselves. Oh man, these Maokai ults have actually been so important for the side of V3, because as soon as these fights start looking like DFM want to start taking those tentative steps forward, try and finish off some kills, get some more burst damage down, the Maokai ult keeps, uh, is playing keep away for V3 themselves, right? If threatening the counter engage. And Archer has found his way to a number of waves that Yuspon just hasn't right it, now. He's, he's got huge. a big level advantage. And that's actually. what means that Archer on finding his way to a side wave, finding his way to uncontested waves may have cost ace cs but when you know this misfortune is your win condition right now alongside the graves it makes a lot of sense to funnel resources into him and he so, is certainly there at two and a half items nearly at a bloodthirst i really like the bloodthirst build as well so going you know your double ad crit items into the bloodthirst so in a big solo queue build most of the time we've seen something like the rapid fire cannon on previous patches but against the double poke even against healing reduction coming in from the Varus now as well as the Zara, it's so important to have that overshield to make sure that you don't get burst out in the initial combo too. Yeah, and we can see there the gold lead was looking pretty good for DFM. Had yeah, a bit of a knockback. Okay. <laughs> and of course, DFM are still in a commanding position, but V3 have started to fight back. We thought they were kind of getting strangled out, but they are not done yet. And Baron is on the table. It's 30 minutes into the game, and either team could definitely think about going for a play around it. Do. DFM right now are the ones with vision, though. But the problem is, DFM have got themselves all the easy towers, right? They've got themselves all the outer turrets, and they've got themselves a couple of the inner ones, too, which are less easy to get in themselves. One of the problems is V3 have a lot of cross-map potential outside of globals, right? They have themselves to teleport them. Sorry, but when you have the zoomies and the strut on the misfortune, means that if you don't have the ability to burst down the Baron very quickly, misfortune will turn up. And when you're playing on red side into Baron, you ha you're kind of corralled into the Baron pit. You've only got one thrash line to get out of there as soon as the bullet time gets down. So it's dangerous for DFM to look for Barons in this game. Definitely can be. And they're just going to set up around poke and vision control right now and they are landing some but currently we've also got to see how well does it stick yumi is doing a very da good job of keeping people topped up and with bloodthirsters and summoner spells available as well keeping people chunked out is going to be challenged for dfm well dude they have themselves a blue trinket which goes onto the baron as well so they know that actually this will be a bait utapon's walking up here but he has himself the edge of night no ultimates thrown out just yet 
Yeah, and he's up at three items, and there's an execution is calling picked up as well. There's a Morella on 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 this Zerath. Going to try and find ways to keep this Both healing lambs. as low as they can. Yeah, a bit of poke does land. Boogie like taking a fair chunk as well, oh. though, and that hook just going mildly wide. Red turret did fall down in while that was going on down on the bot lane, I believe. Yep. And that is something. They're going to try and find a way, and Ebby's going forward. Has found his way onto Archer. Call of the Forge God is coming through. Final chapter. Oh, that's huge! It, though. And V3 are turning this game around. Orn goes too deep. Yeah, there was a turning point there where they knew that um, Orn would not be able to reactivate the ult because the Yumi ult was going to root him in place. The bullet time comes down. It's absolutely huge. Archer gets himself through that fight with another big team fight ult. And this might even open up the Baron for B3 at this point. They've definitely got the damage. Look at the two AD carries. They've got Maokai there to tank. And they can tank Steals him forever. Alive. But here comes the Arcano Barrage trying to do as much damage as they can. Boogie's gone oh, very God. low. Might force him away. And now Paz is in the front line trying to turn it around and steal. But the subjugates come hey, down. some good damage. And there is a fair amount of damage down, but actually the healing's also pretty big. Got to be careful because there's a lot of poke available from behind the pit, and that's the problem of playing oh, into man. poke. Seros is going to force away. Seros, Seros is pulling is his way here, man. He steal! Really is steal, though, is very, very Ooh. low. Did go forward to contest with the vision and took a lot of damage over that wall. Yeah, and uh, so, you know about starting up uh, Baron against V3's comp? I kind of forgot Zareth does, you know, pretty nasty things. He's not even got a death cap yet. No, he doesn't. And uh, it's not going to be the upgraded death cap, of course. It's going to be it because he's already got the on upgrade on Balloon's Echo. Thing is, though, V3 didn't need to take the Baron there. It would have been pretty crazy if they had done. But, you know, I think actually the more this game's going on, V3 are finding it easier and easier because Paz cannot die right now he is definitely a, a thorn in dfm side and the larger that thorn becomes the more difficult this game is going to be on the other side though ocean soul is once again available in about 30 seconds yeah, and this time be with the advantage. scuttle crab gleamed by steel there is uncontestable vision in the river and that's a massive deal there is we can see actually if DFM get oh, they're going to get onto steel that's a lot of damage he's taking pretty low there is no flash be that um, he's going to get the lantern out there and that's a big knock up though onto two paz taken very low has got to go golden boogie's now in trouble the arcana barrage is coming out he's going to quick draw his way to safety but there's a fair amount of poke coming down onto dfm actually archer stepping forward takes a massive chunk from teros who just completed his death camp in time oh, for this fight man, this could be just huge. one more q Ooh. and might kill archer here yeah sleepy Sleep. does Plans. get cleansed away though probably sensible was no vision available yeah. about where that zoe was and that was a difficult space for dfm heal is coming through they've got two ocean drakes that's going to keep them topped up for now uh, Paz doesn't take a lot from that uh, there, Arcano Barrage. I think so, like, yeah, um, but God, Archer uh, does Arcane have the Bloodthirster blood here as well. Yeah, it's the right of the Arcane. Well, but it's, it's both, it. actually. Yeah, right of the Arcane locks in place. Arcano Barrage is the Bullet's King. It's got both. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Anyway. And uh, so we're actually going to see the dragon started up here now. There's uh, a lot of low health bars from DFM right now, though. Yeah, there are. And we'll see how this turns. They're going to try and turn it around. Ocean Drake is going to be secured by the Misfortune. They're going in with the final chapter. Paz is there. That Maokai combo with that is huge. They don't get a lot from it. Paz now locked up. Archer now locked up. Has to flash cleanse away. Is in trouble. Paz finally goes down. Ebby's still alive. It's a one for none for now. But the Drake was secured by the chase. They're backing in a really odd position. The pillar oh, was huge. Archer. Archer does get stunned. Takes a lot of damage. But he's still alive. No, he's not. Because it's a shutdown. Down, but it's turned around because that double up was huge two for one right now an ace boogie and uh that's yumi is still alive gonna try and c contest maybe a baron which you've got to think might be an option huge bond's got teleport i don't think it is right now they're just not gonna think of, about just it just because of way positioning right there and it's just like oh man getting the kill onto archer was really huge at the end of that fight but we're gonna go see how this all came down Portal Jump is a fun ability. Ace just pops back even though the hook does land. Ebby puts himself down the pillar. They change the corruption, locking the uh, uh, locking Archer in place. But he does manage to flash out and get just so much damage onto the front line of Ebby there. But at this point, you'd see what happens with the range advantage of DFM's comp. If you do find yourself inside their guard, you can start getting a lot of damage down. But if you misstep, you do take most of your HP bar. And the double up landed onto Varus and it took half of Seros' HP yep. and killed him out right there. That's what Misfortune with Crit can do. A hell of a lot of AD too. Uh, yeah, exactly. And she just caught uh, caught the end of that Zerath, who is now at three items with a death cap and uh, is starting to do meaningful damage. Sure, but Archer is also doing meaningful oh, damage yeah. with four items. Whoop. Has a Lord Dom's regard, which means that Ebby is not tanky right now to this uh, to this Misfortune. He's got himself a Bramble Vest going in towards a Thornmail, has himself a Forge Fire Cape as well, but this is not, you know, a full armor um, Orn, which can tank up this MF for days. No, it's not, and he hasn't got anything like a Stone Plate or the like yet either. He might Or a Mountain Dragon. Or a Mountain Dragon. Would have been a big one. Would have been nice. But it now means that both teams are at Soul Point. Ooh. And this game continues 36 minutes in, and... Uh, 
DFM had a great early game. V3 turned it around in the mid, and now we're at an incredible knife's edge. Baron is still up. Neither team's managed to claim it yet. And uh, uh, pressure continues to mount it, around Vision, if it nothing It says else. something that Ebi can have an 85 CS lead, and it just doesn't matter because this Marco is doing his job. Yes. It just doesn't matter. This Marco is not really under threat. He is a strong team fight champion right now. Uh, he, you know, he can just tank up most of the team at DFM. He can, do as long as he dodges one important thing with his W, I think he normally has the better of these trades um, between the two top laners. Yeah, but that's the key. He has got to avoid things with the W, and he does go very deep when he's going in. We'll see how it goes. Bit of poke coming down, not doing all that much right now. Looking like a sleep onto Ebi, but he'll survive by using the Bellows Breath to make himself unstoppable, because all can do that. Yep. And we'll see how things continue, because there's Vision now coming in, and V3 forced out their own jungle for now. Yep. And um, I think it's worth checking in on Boogie, right? Because we talk, we talk this guy up so much. He is our MVP in so many ways. This guy is so important. Uh, Pillar landing onto Ace, but Sleep landing onto Steel. Good damage there. And remember, when DFM take damage, they don't tend to heal it up too quickly. So uh, Maokai L in. Is, Maokai L is going in. Gang taken pretty low. So is Ebi. He's taken super low. He's going to survive with the shield for now. Time. Bullet time was huge. Oh. And the double up onto Youth Bond over the top of it. With Holy massive crap. Archer is doing so much work right now. This is actually going to buy them the mid lane turret it as well. Is. And this can change the way the game is being played, right? Because we've seen most of this game has been posturing either around the dragon or around the baron. And this means that the vision is much easier to push deeper into the jungle now from V3. The mid lane turret surviving this long was very important for DFM, but it's gone down after 38 minutes. It has, and more and more Archer is becoming a problem and DFM can't find their way onto him in a meaningful way. He's avoided a lot of skill shots over this game. His cleanses, his flashes, and of course Yumi yeah. have been really great to keep yes. that carry alive. And for now, he is the linchpin of this V3 yeah. composition. And uh, on the other side, DFM have picked themselves up two Warmogs. That is important, don't get me wrong. But the problem is actually a lot of the damage is landing incrementally over time, meaning that DFM aren't really getting the most out of that passive in the short space of these poke wars, really. If you do back off and reset the fight, they come in very handily, but I'm not sure how effective they've been so far. It hasn't, but never mind that, because a monumental fight is about to be upon us. Soul Ocean <laughs> Soul on the table for both teams. Vision control set up by DFM. They're setting up a bait, and V3 are going to have to be very careful about how they enter this river. It's been controlled by V3 the last couple of fights. This time around, DFM have find their way onto some vision control. Steals in the front line, getting call chunked out. God. That is a call of the Forge God. He's getting put. That's a massive call of the Forge God. Actually, pass taken very low. Ignite is on. He's got stone plate running as well, though. Does manage to survive for now and will heal up with the ocean drakes, but it means that he's chunked out in time for this drake. He's got teleport. He's going to back. But there are no wards right but now. But there's no Trundle ult now as well. That is a big thing, which means that when you no teleport in, either. no Call of the Forge God, no Trundle ult, teleport coming in. This could be a flank here, but it's going to be into no vision in the river. Very dangerous. Yeah, Boogie's over the back. He hops He's over. A level advantage here on Steel as well. Graves can do that. Steel taken pretty low. It can pretty yeah, and look at that, Drake. Flash coming out. Boogie is going to have to go golden as well, though. It'd be very, very low. Zerath forced to flash over the wall by Archie. Just Archie's runs a monster. at him. He is a monster. That means the Ocean Soul will be secured now by V3. They kill Steel as well. That means Baron's on the table. And V3 have turned this game completely on its head. Holy crap. Paz Archer, take a bow. Bo Boogie with a clutch stopwatch there as well. It's a game of inches, and the inches are all going the way of V3. It looks like the game is slowly but surely slipping out the way of DFM. Outside of some miracle burst poke out of the carries from DFM, I don't see how this Baron can be stopped. Well, we're going to see what it did. We saw the last Baron attempt was difficult because there there's no the jungler here. There is no jungler. Ebi's here. He's got some health bar, but that's about all he's got. Seros is over the back. He's going to try and do as much damage as he can. Try and steal this if he can to some damage. Not enough. And this will mean secured by Boogie. The fight happens in the red side jungle, though. Ebi gets lanterned out to safety. Baron and Ocean Soul and a kill onto Sail secured by V3. That's huge in so many ways. Jungler goes down in that previous fight. Archer once again just kind of strutting his stuff with the strut. And we're going to go back to a replay. I don't know where to start. Boogie hops over very riskily into the pit, gets hooked, gets CC'd in place, but he uses his mobility, which uh, Graves has a lot of, to get himself kind of out of the first stage of that fight. Archer actually low-key the MVP there for shutting down Saros, meaning that he couldn't just hold the ult in place, wait for that stopwatch to go back, try and get a kill onto the Boogie with that last ride of the Arcane there. And it means that Boogie survives, gets the dragon gets the baron.
Yeah, and uh, it's going to be a tall order now for DFM to come back into this game, which was a shock to say after yeah. they were so far ahead. But that one fight around the mid lane turret and just the amount of time it took them to get towards the Baron meant that V3 got to scale, got to get to a point where their healing is just insurmountable yeah. right now. And one thing we talk about Varus is that, well, we've made the point on podcasts, on previous broadcasts, saying that Varus doesn't fall off when he's paired up with another champion that pokes out and bursts normally that doesn't work when you've got triple ocean drake an ocean soul a yumi a bloodthirster onto the one carry that's really tearing apart dfm archer is very hard to deal with he has full five damage items plus boot six item ad carry with the yumi on top of that with the athenes the Ardent sensor archer is so hard to deal with for dfm yeah they're gonna shove in now on look at that damage to the tower that was absolutely <laughs> massive they're going to start the siege. There's got a two lanes pushing. Ebby's roaming down. He's got the top wave shoving for DFM. But that mid lane tier two goes down. And the gold lead for the first time in a long time is V3s in this game. It is, and they've got themselves, yeah, they've got themselves up to about 1,000 gold lead. Of course, when you've got like 65k in the bank, um, it means less. But, and of course, there are all items in as well. You've got the Yomi's Wraith Blade coming in. Archer's oh, gonna my go Archer's gonna get caught, oh but it doesn't God, matter because he just not. blows up steel going forward. Archer's gonna die, though! And now he's been shut down, and I think you'll take that trade jungler for any carry. Yumi falls as well. It's a two for one. Finally, Archer falls. He couldn't get safe enough. And that actually is going to kill the Baron push. And DFM aren't going to go quietly into the night. Yeah, not quietly indeed. That was a bit of a bang there. So uh, coming out from uh, C side of DFM, really shutting down Archer. He didn't survive even using both of his summoners. And this is the difficulty when you start breaking up this five-man unit. There's now a 30-second death timer remaining for the Misfortune. Might cost themselves an inhibitor, maybe. Maybe. They've got some wave clear. There is a graze, but got... he's got to be very careful stepping forwards. Maokai's around as well. They're going to try and clear up the wave best they have they graves can. Also if they want they to. They do. They're going to think about using it, but Ebby's just stepping forward, and he's very tanky. Uh, gonna continue to shove in stone plate now on this Orn finally did okay. go towards that rather than completing the Thorn Mail. They're gonna be forced away, can't get towards that inhibitor. Good enough clear. Yeah, I think the Bramble Vest was just fine just getting the Grievous Winds down. The Thorn Mail gives you a lot of armor, of course, but the stone plate gives you the extra HP to work with because you can really try and tank out some of that burst coming out from V3. One thing which we need to touch on as well is obviously Ace. We haven't talked about too much in this game, but I think that's saying something given how much he's been put under put under the cosh this game. He's been losing it with Grace, and uh, he was here for this bot lane fight. Yeah, he was, but look at Archer course, here. Course, just, yeah. Was massive, was forced to flash beyond that pillar, did get at least the kill in oh. return, but that's what we talk about when we say if the poke lands thus far archer's fancy feet have been pretty stunning Evie it wasn't really good enough yeah. this time yeah evie really locks him up superbly there um just wasn't quite enough tried to step back in try and get an extra bit of damage i guess some excuse me healing from the bloodthirst and he's now got himself a mercurial scimitar as well sold himself the uh, rapid fire can which he picked up went towards that uh, next uh, lifesteal item and of course the qss is very important too there's no uh mikhail's on the yumi probably won't no have that but it means you do have the, the ability to qss flash out of the um or knock up as well so it could be quite important to keep track of that as the game goes on it will be and elder drake on the board mm. in just over a minute about two to baron so those will be the next big fights and of course with the base not broken by v3 on that push there will be at least one more massive team fight in this game yeah. you have to think unbroken unbowed gonna try and make the most of this elder dragon would but the problem is you're gonna have to do that with a two level smite disadvantage if it comes down to a 50 50 well it probably ain't gonna be so much of that because boogie does have that advantage on the smite now he does, and that is what Graves can do for you the later this game goes. He's been farming well. He's managed to pit himself up towards the four items. He's gone an Umbral Glaive for more of that vision control alongside a Black Cleaver and a Last Whisper because you know what Misfortune needs? Squish your targets to hit. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, and there's a more, yeah, the more reminder on Graves is really important, right? Because the healing reduction, uh, although it's kind of minimal, you're talking about, you know, oh, actually, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> there's so much posturing here. There uh, is Archer going to oh, get caught, caught by the pillar. Paz has been caught. The Cold Force oh, got missed onto Archer. The Stone Blade is huge, but Ebby's pop tears as well is surviving pretty hard. Paz does get lanterned out, and everybody's alive with a redemption for now. Paz caught again, stone plates down, but uh, 
This is just continuing to be. He did get chunked, but remember there is an ocean soul available, and that is a disaster. Archer has no flash. This is a really bad place. He's got to be. He's just take a bit of poke there, but Yumi heals me. He's back to pretty much full. He's in a difficult position in this jungle thing. But Strut and Zumi's are abilities, and he does manage to walk really fast out of the situation. He does one way or another. Managed to clear out some vision as well. Ebby's walking up here. He is. He's very tanky as well. There is no stone plate for either of these top top lane tanks for now. Boogie stepping forwards. Elder Drake is started by V3, and they have position. DFM, I think, are backing away right now. They're going to try and find their way in one more time. Boogie's there. He's in the front oh, line. So Archer and Reyna are in the backside. Boogie is getting a lot of damage. So Archer's in a bad spot. He's taking a lot of damage. He's getting knocked up. He's going to die. Utapon flashing in for a clutch kill. And that means Urena goes down as well. This is huge. Double kill for Varys. Five versus three. Paz is having to run away. He flashes. He's going to try and get out. He's going to get Pillar back. He's got nowhere to go as Ebby deals with two on the front. Paz trying to run away. He's tanky, but is he tanky He's trying enough? to clear out the wave. He's clearing out the wave so they can't push. Man, he can't do enough. The wave survives. Utapon is here. Elder Drake is live. Baron is live. What did DFM do? They've got so many options. I don't think... Uh, they, okay, so it looks like they are tentatively heading back down to the Elder Dragon. But this is going to be... Yeah, it looks like Boogie's they are going to start alive. Boogie is alive, has flash, has, ult, has a smite advantage. Doesn't have himself any wards here, though. It looks like they're actually using... <laughs> both jungles using sweepers here. This is tense stuff. Oh, they're going to turn around. He's just gone in too early. He knows he's got to run away. There's the pillar. Ebby's going to continue Ooh. to flash him. That's a big chain of corruption. Ebby gets the kill. Doesn't need it. Just throws the call of the fourth god to add damage onto the Elder Drake. Actually, it looked like Ace went to push in the bot lane as well. Just get themselves some the pressure somewhere. Got the inhibitor. He did indeed. So Elder Dragon's DFM. Probably going to lead into a Baron as well. And then you're going to have a Siege comp with Elder, with Baron. And of course, this is up against the Ocean Soul, which is very important in a couple of these fights. But Archer just couldn't survive that. That fight it wasn't the clean 5v5 and arch uh Utapon flash forward on the varus the burst came out strong and the mf went down for so long in this game archer's fancy feet his swift footwork has kept him alive we saw it in the bot lane dive when they went all in we saw it around those fights again in the mid lane and the round the ocean soul fights he hasn't managed it for the last two He's got cleanse, he's got flashback up, but he's going to have to do it again versus Baron versus Elder for the next two plus minutes. Will do indeed. I think Ace might be able to pick himself up a death cap at least at this That's point. Something. So now we have to have watch ourselves the Zoe as well, right? Because that would be the point where, you know, if an unlucky unlucky skill shot lands onto Seros, if it ever finds his way onto him, probably the Thresh as well, it could be a kill coming through from that side. So once again, it's Evie getting a knock up onto Archer. Didn't have the flash available to him. And then the MF goes down. Yeah, she does. But Baron is here. They're going to split into a 4-1. Ebi will be somewhere keeping the waves pushed in the mid lane because he can. He's got teleport. He, he got called Forge God to assist fights from a long way away. But that means that DFM barreling down bot lane right now. We're watching Boogie head to the top side to try and get a wave yeah. push up there. They are. And Boogie's gone for a full lethality build. And I kind of get that because, you know, there is no armor onto uh, the Zareth in particular. You know, if you do ever get on top of Saros, there's a good chance he dies. But the problem is, you don't get to tank through the front line very, very much. You get the Ocean Soul, and you do have the Yumi, but the Yumi can only be attached to one target, and you want that really to either be Paz when he's right in the thick of things, or onto Archer. Baron buff is going to be, uh, you know, shredding down these bot lane turrets. See where this push stops. We'll see how it goes. Ebby's shoved in the wave in the mid lane. He's teleporting in just to be here for the fight in case it breaks up because they wave, are so wave. afraid. It's three Warmogs for DFM between their support and the top two members of their squad. They're going to shove in. They've got inhibited. They're just going to try and end. The they know they've got, seconds, they yeah. are about as strong as they're possibly going to get. The bullet time bullet is time's huge. huge. Seros is taken massively low. Paz is also in the front line, but the redemption is big and heals people back up. Ebby's in the front line and they can't kill him either because the Elder Drake on top of Poke is enough. The Ocean Soul means nothing. Archers had to run away as well. They're going to keep shoving. This Nexus turret is down to one third. The shove continues. Boogie taken to about one third. Okay, five half, seconds apologize. left on Elder, and he's going to continue to shove in. Ace taken really low. Archer taken really low. I think DFM have done it. They can't fight versus the Pope. Boogie's going to take really low. The Nexus is exposed, and DFM turn it back around. Game one of the semifinals goes towards Detonation Focus Me. Nail-biting 50-minute affair, but it's DFM that comes out on top after it felt like the, uh, the handle, the reins of the game were handed over so many times. So, first time for today, first time in a month. Mass Swan, what did you think of game one? That was just everything we've been waiting for for this whole month leading up to this. That was a game where both teams had 
opportunities to basically destroy and open it up and I honestly couldn't call it at a lot of points. It was too close to call, but congratulations to DFM. They played so well in that last team fight, really. They absolutely did. And I do want to give props to particularly Archer for helping turn that game around for V3 to an extent in the mid game. DFM had run over the early game. They got massive CS leads. They got massive turret leads. They looked completely unassailable uh, until a misfortune with multiple <laughs> items managed to find multiple team fights where she was 1v4 running people over walls. Uh, she was. But eventually her luck ran out. Her dancing feet weren't quite enough and a misfortune doesn't have dashes and it showed in the end mm. multiple pickups just about securing it for dfm and when you add an elder dragon on top of a lot of poke people get executed i actually can't remember the last time i saw an ocean soul lose it's been a while yeah that stings a little bit but i mean eh, that last team fight was pretty bad archer got caught out one thing i'm getting reminiscence of a famous CGA mid laner getting caught out one time and it basically Lucky. costing the whole game. And it's... Yeah. Oh, well, this is the problem. You have to play on the edge when you are the majority of your team's damage, right? Mm. I think that Ace found it really hard to put down consistent damage that game. Like, imagine if that's a rumble in that game or something. Yeah, imagine, imagine if, if that... it's Syndra. Imagine if it's Syndra, right? I feel like both of those would have been a better lane match if it's the Zerath, but they wanted to pick the Zoe for that Graves combo. And we have to talk about Boogie right because yes. he wasn't explosive dynamic graves boogie that we we know and love right um he found it really hard that game um i think a lot of this did come in from the early flash blown in the mid lane i think that really screwed over a lot of what b3 yeah. wanted to do in the early game yeah, I think and true. look how easy it was for dfm to take down every out of turret yeah go into a lot of early dragons too and then just come like roll into a mid game where they did get turned around on them yeah sure because arch was so strong but it wasn't you know, particularly contested early, early game. Uh, and I, I do have to call out as well, I, I think there was potentially some nerves going on because what happened to the first Rift Herald? Wasn't spawned. and that, well, he that's died kind of, when it went out. Uh, and yeah, that was just died when it came out. But that's my point, it, just wasn't, it wasn't used very well. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is the signs of a team that's just struggling a little bit and will become a... Uh, yeah, it's been difficult, I think, for V3 in this game. And they've, they've still got games to play. You know, they're not out of this series or anything yet, but that's an ugly loss. You think you come back in and you lose it anyway. It's rough. I mean, it was a game they still got to the spot to win. They were very far away and they pulled it back. So they're definitely a team that is showing tenacity that they can play from behind. And potentially, if things go a few different ways, they could definitely win these games. It's getting very exciting. We're going to go on a very short break here over here. Um, and we'll be back with more of our thoughts and our thoughts predicting for this match two of V3 Esports versus Dedimation. Folks, me see you very, very soon.